to Consciously Healthy. I'm Laura. I'm Claire. And today we are going to be talking about being a good girl. Ooh. Are you a good girl? No. <laughs> are, are you a bad woman? <laughs> I used to be such a good girl. Did you? Oh my goodness. God, you yes. hide that well these days. Thanks. Oh, thanks. I feel like I've grown. <laughs> yeah, I was really, um, really like whoever was in authority whatever they said I did it yeah I think I actually managed to get through the whole of school without a detention oh I think there was a class detention any of my old school mates I are watching but th- no I think I managed to do that as well yeah, it was because you are a good girl oh yeah through and through <laughs> um actually when I look at our family dynamics I mean my sister does have some good girl tendencies but she very much grew up feeling the need to be a rebel whereas I mean, it's very common with first children that they can suffer with the the people-pleasing good girl syndrome. And how this played out for me is that I I was a yes person. So I said yes to absolutely everything. And I would always consider what other people would need before my own Mm. needs. And that created all kinds of interesting dynamics in all of my relationships and my working life and and pretty much everything so it's it's a complex that really really set itself deep um we used to joke actually we used to call Mm. her princess i used to have a bit of a princess complex and i think it very much comes from uh, if if we look at how we celebrate women in society particularly here in the western world we celebrate the disney princess we, um, you know, that, that very innocent, naive, um, uh, sensitive, you know, we very much celebrate that. And if we experience that as a young girl, if we, are, if we do have traits such as those as a young girl, and they are, um, yeah, celebrated, then we take them through into adulthood. And what can happen, and this very much happened for me, is that we end up becoming girls in a woman's world, mm. or in a, in a man's world, actually, and that can be utterly terrifying. So this can be the seat of a lot of anxiety and panic, and I know that's how it happened for me. So I was, because I've been such a good girl, and I passed all my exams, and I did really well at school, then I went to college, and then I went to university, because that's the dumb thing. And of course... I was then able to get a very high powered job. So this good girl, this princess in me, then was out working in the working world and having to make adult decisions with adults. And she was terrified. She was utterly terrified. And I've heard, me- I've heard many times mm. from women who said, I still feel like I'm a little girl. I don't feel like I'm a woman. And I think that this also taps into the fact that we don't, have any kind of celebration or ceremony around when a girl goes through that transition and becomes a woman so around her bleed for example her first bleed and if we were to mark those that that occasion and really honor the fact that a girl has become a woman Mm. and identify what a woman is because we have so many examples of what it is to be a, a a girl i mean we look at celebrity culture if we look at models if we look at fashion the the girl image is really really welcomed mm. uh, what does the woman image mm. look like what what it do, what does it mean to be a woman oh this could be this is quite a passion area of mine <laughs> <laughs> just discovered that i could talk about this quite a lot yeah and it's interesting because i said that i was very very i was a very good girl and it's quite interesting because i have got um i'd like to call her a mini me but actually she's taller than me now I have a, um, a, a daughter and she is um, just coming up to 12 and yeah, taller than me, she's about five foot eight. And it's really interesting because there is so many bits of her that are exactly the same as, as me and we look really identical. Um, in fact, one of my best friends from school says that it's like, it's, she, call, she keeps calling her Claire because she's like, it's just like looking at you in 1986. Um, <laughs> but what's interesting is she does not have the good girl thing that I had rocking on. She is absolutely, she's, she's not naughty and she's not actually a rebel. She's just so absolutely herself, unequivocally herself, which I definitely didn't have. I, I could be pushed around a little bit more. So I only developed my... Um, 
guess my identity. Assert- yeah, my identity and my assertive streak when I was in my mid twenties, and from that point, like this was absolutely, this is totally who I am. It, it was just all suppressed because of fear and conditioning and the fear of being excluded from my family or whatever. And it is so interesting because now I am so anti-authority and so unenculturable and you know all of the things that I, I was have been completely split apart because of doing some inner, inner work and finding out who I really am and so this kind of good girl syndrome I actually didn't have it to the point that you had it because I never had the kind of the princess complex I'd always been taught to have debates and kind of you know get my opinion out there so I didn't have the thing that you have had going on but it was always kind of there and it kind of leads me to believe well if there's me who's completely opinionated unenculturable truth seeking bit of a rebel and then there's you who was you know such a good girl but i was still operating from a fear of authority that actually maybe as a society we're bringing our children up to mm. really force them into being a good girl and a good boy like we're forcing our people mm. to become this little good person and it's this value judgment even in the word good, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's like good dog. Good dog. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, what does that even mean? It mm. is It is completely subjective what is good and what is bad. And so actually that's a really interesting point is that we're kind of aiming for this to be good, to be perfect. And it's unattainable. It's, it is, and that is so much pressure to... To try and achieve something that is impossible, it's just so much pressure. And so if you are someone who resonates with trying to be perfect and trying to be a good girl, then it's really worth exploring. And I know when it it really unlocked for me when I discovered a parenting uh, type of psychology work that we do. And we've, we've brought this through into our Reclaim Your Life program and this is a way of being able to support the little one in us Mm. that is trying to trying really hard to be good and to be perfect and really supporting that side of ourselves by bringing through the adult woman so recognizing that there are two parts of ourselves there is a very young one and there is a there is an adult there is an adult Mm. woman and really looking at cultivating what a what a woman actually represents Mm. what does a woman represent to you oh that's a great question i mean you know if we look at the teachings of tantra and what the divine feminine is then you know it's very easy to think of the woman as being just the mother the nurturer you know the kind of the the madonna figure really but actually there's 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 other sides to the woman so the woman is also the warrior she is you know the lioness that is not going to let anybody anywhere near her cubs and she is, you know, she, it, like the, 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 it's about fierce love, bringing through this fierce love. So, um, and also then there's the lover, there's the, you know, absolute essential sexual aspect of the divine feminine. So for me, being a woman is about embracing all of those parts and actually claiming my equality in, term, in relationship to the, to the masculine. Mm. So I don't want to be a man. I want to be equal to the masculine and vive la différence. Leave, you know, I'm absolutely celebrating the fact that men are exceptional at, at one thing and women are exceptional at others. What does being a woman mean to you? I'm going to regret asking this question because it's such a biggie. Um, I experience being a woman as a very energetic thing. It's like a movement and a flow. So, I mean, we do a lot of work around our uh, periods, around our cycles. And the more that I allow myself as a woman to go up and come down and go up and come down and, and allow myself to, to be in my feelings, the, the more I feel contentment as a woman. And, I mean, I, just to even look at women's bodies, we, we are, we're like that. We are curves. We are, we, you know, as nature, as well as in our physical form, we, are the, we are the flow. And I think it's the tantra model that says that men, the masculine is consciousness. He's just present. He's just there, solid all the time. Whereas women are a flow. Women yeah. are just kind of, you know, in movement at all times. A bit like a pole dancer. Pole dancer around the pole. Yeah. 
So uh, definitely being a woman is about being in my flow. It's about being in my movement. It's... Uh, being able to change your mind. All the time. <laughs> all the time. Um, people in my life struggle with that, but I have a good time with it. Um, and... I'm, I'm, I, yeah, women are energy. We are... The feminine is an energetic force. And it's... I see feminine and, and and what it is to be a woman in when I look at nature when I look at gardens when I look at flowers when and yeah it's a really big question and it's that we're a vessel for emotion mm-hmm. so a lot of women who are sort of, sort of pushing down their emotions so particularly in good girl syndrome the pushing down of anger the pushing down of you know um uh frustration the pushing down of passion actually this is a real stemming of a stunting of of the 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 feminine principle because the feminine principle is just literally the energy in motion and the vessel and the vehicle for emotion yeah i think to be a woman is incredibly complex and there are so many sides of us like you said there's the mother and there is the lover and there is the warrior and and it is celebrating all of those sides mm. and um and so if you are experiencing being in this good girl syndrome i would recognize how to become more into your into into becoming a woman so i can really recommend things like red tent check out um just type in red tent into google and check it out it's women's circles of women supporting each other wherever they are Mm -hmm. and i would recommend looking at doing some self-parenting work so that you can feel the woman coming through as well as honoring mm-hmm. the child within you and check out reclaim your life with ease.com absolutely yeah. and so that is good girl syndrome mm. subscribe here for more fabulous ruminatings <laughs> <laughs>